Hello and welcome. My name is John Dickinson for Boris Effects, and in this Particle Illusion tutorial, it's all about the graph view. I'm going to show you how to set keyframes and adjust their timing using various graph view options and techniques. So let's just jump straight in. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is add an emitter to the stage. I'm just going to search for basic dots and add basic dots 05A to the stage just by double clicking. And let's take a look at the different ways that you can add keyframes. The first way is here in the controls view. If I just twirl open dots, I'm going to add a keyframe for particle weight. I can set a keyframe by clicking on the gray box with the dots and choosing linear or bezier. I'm just going to choose linear. That sets my first keyframe down here in the graph. And you can also see a keyframe up here in the mini timeline. It's going to move forward and change that value. And you can see down here in the graph, I've now got two keyframes and I've got a graph line in between them. Come back to the beginning and the weight starts to increase. I can navigate between those two keyframes just by using the arrows here in the controls view. And I can remove the keyframes by choosing constant. The next way to add a keyframe is directly here in the graph view by clicking on this add keyframe button. And once again, moving in time, changing the value. And I can also navigate between the keyframes by using the previous keyframe and next keyframe buttons. So once again, I'm just going to choose constant and I'm going to reset this to zero. The third way to add keyframes is to use the toggle animate static mode. So making sure that you have the parameter that you want a keyframe selected. In this case, I'm going to choose velocity. And notice how my time indicator is further down the timeline. If I click on this and then change the value for velocity, you can see it adds a keyframe at my current time indicator, but there's also an automatic keyframe created at zero seconds. So if you want to start an animation at a specific time in the timeline, don't use animate static mode. And it is really easy to forget that toggle animate static mode is on, and you might be moving along with your animation and change a value that you didn't want a keyframe, and you're automatically going to create a keyframe for that. So that's a real gotcha, and it gets me all the time. So I generally use either the control view option or the add keyframe option in the timeline. Because once you've set your first keyframe, then anytime you move your time indicator and change that value, you're automatically going to add a keyframe anyway. And notice when keyframing is active, we get this red box around the parameter. So I'm just going to uncheck that. Now, as we saw, you can change the values, of course, by dragging the value here in the controls view. You can also do it directly in the timeline just by clicking on the keyframe and dragging. And notice I actually have the bounce parameter selected. I need to have the velocity parameter selected. And I can move those keyframes. But it's really important to pay attention to what's happening over here in the controls view. And that will dictate what you're able to do over here in the graph view. So if I drag this up and down, that changes the value. And if I drag it left and right, that changes the speed. Notice when I drag left and right that these keyframes in the mini timeline are also moving. Now, if you didn't want to change the value, but you wanted to change the timing, just drag the keyframes in the mini timeline. To add a keyframe directly here in the graph view, hold down Control or Command on Mac and click. If you want to change multiple keyframes, just drag a marquee around them and then just click on one of them and you can move them together. If you want to change the interpolation of the keyframe, there's a few ways to do that. Let me just increase the amount of particles that I have here. Now 
Just make sure that you have the parameter selected. Move the current time indicator to the keyframe that you want to change. You can see currently it's set to linear. I'm just going to choose Bezier, and that changes that interpolation. The other way, even if your current time indicator isn't on the keyframe, is just to hold down Alt or Option on Mac and click the keyframe, which is definitely faster. To break the handles, it's the same thing. Just hold down Alt or Option and click on a handle, and you can see that changes the color of the handles. Nice. There's a few ways to delete keyframes. We already saw how you can choose constant and that will remove all keyframes. If you want to delete a single keyframe, just hold down Control or Command on Mac and click the keyframe. To remove more than one keyframe, just drag a marquee around them and do the same thing, Control or Command click. Or you can use the keyboard by hitting the Delete key. Okay, now let's take a look at position. I'm just going to choose Constant for Velocity and just set some keyframes for position. Now we can set keyframes for position in exactly the same way as we do with other parameters. The key difference is that position doesn't have a graph in the graph view, it has a motion path. So let's set some keyframes for position x, y. So once again, I'm going to choose linear, move my current time indicator, and then just click on the effect point in the stage and drag. And you can see that's made a motion path. Just click on the keyframe that you want to move on the stage and drag. Once again, choose constant to remove those keyframes. Next, let's add a keyframe using the add keyframe button. Move in the timeline and drag. And you can see that doesn't start until the current time indicator hits that first keyframe. Once again, I'm going to choose constant and just by way of review, toggle animate static mode, move in time and then just drag and that creates a keyframe at zero seconds and the current time. Move a single keyframe around just by clicking and dragging. And if you want to move all keyframes as one, just to reposition the entire path, just hold down Control or Command and click on the emitter's center point. To change the interpolation of a keyframe, just make sure you're at that keyframe and then choose Bezier. Click and drag out the handle. Making sure this is selected. Go to the next keyframe. Let's leave that one at linear and just add a third keyframe just by clicking and dragging, making sure we're selected here. Grab that emitter, just move that down here. Now I've come back to the previous keyframe and make that one Bezier. And to break the Bezier handles, just hold down the Alt or Option key and click on the handle. And change the timing just by dragging those keyframes a little closer. And just making sure that toggle animate static is off. Let's just finish up by talking about the carriage controls here. Obviously, we have the play button, we have the previous and next frame buttons, and 10 frames back, 10 frames forward, and also the go to first frame and last frame buttons but it is much faster to use the keyboard shortcuts. To go back to the first frame, hit the home key, and to go to the last frame, hit the end key. Play is the space bar. Move one frame forward is the right arrow, and left arrow to go back a frame. Hold down shift to go in powers of 10. So once you know those shortcuts, then you really won't use these controls. And lastly, to move an emitter in the timeline, 
just click on the starting arrow here and drag it. Notice how the keyframes also move. If you want to change the starting time of the emitter but not move the keyframes, just hold down the Control or Command key. Notice how those keyframes remain stationary. Okay, so that's pretty much everything you need to know to take control of your own particle simulations over time. You can download Particle Illusion standalone for free at borisfx.com, including thousands of free particle emitter presets. Continue watching this Getting Started tutorial series to learn more about what you can do with Particle Illusion and find out more about the plugin version of Particle Illusion with extra features, including built in Mocha Motion tracking at borisfx.com.